and welcome to the Equinix Developers YouTube, Twitch and Periscope. I'm your host for today, David Flanagan, although you will know me as Rock Hood across the internet. Today is a metallurgy episode, which means we're going to be exploring some open source technology. And today we're taking a look at Harvester from the Rancher Labs slash SUSA team. It's an open source cloud native project that provides hyper-converged infrastructure. Really, it provides VMs. It's uh, attempting to allow you to slice and dice your bare metal servers to provide a VMware-like environment for running your applications and workloads. So let's pop the chat off the screen. I'm going to get my screen shared right away. And what we're going to do is just start working through the documentation, see if we can get this deployed on Equinix Metal and kick the tires on it all in under 35 minutes. Now, the deployment of this on Equinix Metal is not something I've done before. However, they do have an IPEXI example for Equinix, which we're going to try and go through now. Uh, and we'll start this right away because um, putting this device and getting it running could take a little bit of time. And then we will look back and take a look at the documentations and the features, et cetera, and just get a bit of a feel for Harvester. So. Uh, what it's telling us here is that we need to use this special syntax. So this is a cloud um, config difference thing. <laughs> uh, typically, when you put up a bare metal machine or any cloud server, you would provide a cloud configuration, which is either YAML or Bash script or multi-part. However, Equinix Metal supports um, a couple of shebangs, one of them being IPEXI, which allows us to pass through the parameters for the Pixie boot. Um, so we're going to try and do this now. Now, it does suggest that you can fork this repository to be able to modify or provide different images. For today's session, I will be using the official ones. So we need to put in your server. Select custom IPixie. We're going to drop the URL into the IPixie install and then add our uh, configuration script to user data, like so. So let's just work through this and see what happens. So I'm going to click new server on demand. Let it spin for a few more seconds before I do a hard refresh. All right, there we go. Let's go with Amsterdam. Uh, because we're going to slice and dice this and create some virtual machines, I'm going to go for our M3 large. Um, so this is just a machine that has 256 gig of RAM, 32-core processor, decent SSD, and some NVMEs as well. Uh, I'll assume LTS Ubuntu will work just fine. Uh, oh no, we're doing IPixie. Uh, so we're going to do custom IPixie. And now we can drop in our script URL. Okay, so let's go back to the documentation. So we select this and custom IPixie settings, input URL to IPixie install file. And to the script, what? <laughs> and put URL to the IPixie install file. Okay, so that's just this file, which we don't really have. So let's see if we can get a raw link from GitHub here. There we go. So we're not modifying this. So we're going to copy it verbatim and drop this here. As per the documentation, we are not going to select the always pixie boot. So let's just confirm that. So do not enable. Uh, type a host name, and then our user data is going to be like so. Okay. So I'm okay with this being as is. We'll add our user data. We'll drop this in. Do I need to change anything here? Uh, so this is going to be the root password, and I need an SSH key. So let me grab key here. So uh, we need a token. Um, I believe Harvester supports running on a clustered setup. So I'm just going to leave this as token for today. Like so. We've got our SSH key. I'm going to have a very, very insecure password. Apologies. And 
that should hopefully be enough. So let's go back to our documentation and click deploy. And we can follow along with the uh, band slash serial console if we wish. And then after it all boots up, we should be able to browse to this IP address, uh, our server IP address on this port and get the harvester user interface. All right, let's see what happens then. So let's just click deploy. And I think what I'll do is I'll probably play one more uh, for the cluster. Maybe not, we'll see. Okay, so we got that on its way. Um, so let's take a look at the homepage. I was considering popping over the, the serial console, um, but we'll maybe do that if we go through the documentation and we don't see that we have anything running yet. Um, but I'm hoping we should be able to just hit the web interface and start kicking the tires on this. <clears throat> so this is the open source hyperconverged infrastructure, HCI for short, solution for a cloud native world. There is a demo. Uh, we won't watch that. Okay, so why Harvester? So it's using open source components to provide virtualization. I believe it uses KVM. I'm sure that's maybe listed further down. It will lower the total, total cost of ownership. Um, yeah, VMware license fees are, are wild. A great product, but you know, if you don't have the money for it, you need alternative options. Uh, and it integrates with other tools. So we'll kind of see what that's doing here. Um, how this works. As we get our nodes, it's going to provide Longhorn. So that's the Rancher solution for storage. And um, I believe in fact, it does have a CSI driver. Um, so I wonder if this is using Kubernetes in some fashion, or maybe Longhorn is running out of Kubernetes control plane. I'm not entirely sure. Although the existence of kubevert here would suggest that what a harvester is doing is the Apex is booting up into a working Kubernetes control plane with Longhorn and kubevert installed, and then as we click ops our way through the user interface and request new virtual machines is that they're going to be scheduled via kubernetes so that's an assumption um, i haven't looked at this in a great amount of detail but longhorn i know is a csi driver or can be kubevert definitely is a runtime for kubernetes so i suspect we're getting a kubernetes cluster uh, okay uh, let's go to the documentation Okay, so we're going to get this nice UI, which I'm looking forward to clicking around. I don't think we need to look at the installation of our alternative options. So they do provide an ISO image as part of the GitHub release. This just means you could probably spin it up in Vagrant rather easily and start kicking the tires on it there. We're using the Pixie boot. Uh, so it's all configured through this. I could have set up NTP, DNS. Uh, nothing particularly more interesting for me right now. As far as authentication goes, I think our password is just going to be password. Uh, let's see, Harvester Network. Oh, there we go. Harvester is built on Kubernetes using a CNI. Okay. So I don't know what that means we're getting by default. So it's got the Harvester Network Controller and something called Multus, which I'm not familiar with. What is Multus? Oh, it's a CNI. Okay. A CNI Meta plugin. Not the CNI enables to attach multiple network interfaces to pods and Kubernetes. I guess this is something they're doing to run the, the virtual machines on it, which will have a slightly different set up to run pods. Interesting. Uh, we get a VLAN configuration. And we can enable the loads in the UI. OK, so a lot of this we're just going to drive through the UI, I believe. Let's import images. I guess that's, yeah, yeah. Right? Like if I want to run Ubuntu, if I want to run Red Hat, CentOS, etc., I can add those images. We support QCOW 2, RAW, and ISO. Awesome. <laughs> the UI doesn't support uploading it there is an issue okay and then we can get instructions for creating virtual machines and, and all of that stuff so seems like a really cool project i'm excited to play with this um, 
you know, a lot of people come to bare metal for performance reasons and for cost reasons. Um, depending on what your motivations are, you still want the potential to run uh, virtual machines. You know, virtual machines aren't bad. I think this is a, a really common misconception, particularly in the cloud native ecosystem where we've got this dogmatic response to virtual machines. Like it's like, ah. um, but there's a, there's a use case. There's a time and a place. Containers are great for, you know, for scheduling on Kubernetes, scaling our applications, keeping things really, really tight and fast. But sometimes you need proper isolation or segmentation and virtual machines really do really well there. Okay. Uh, I also found, as I, hopefully this is yeah, it's getting near. Um, I also found someone has made a Terraform module or at least an example repository which also will spin up Harvester on top of Equinus Nettle using iPixie. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same as what we've just done to the UI, but you know, the automation is there. Uh, GitHub giving me a little bit of trouble today. Come on, GitHub. Is it my network? Maybe it's me. All right, let's check. Sure, I'm on my wired. I'm not my Wi Fi. I guess if GitHub's down, we all get to go home. I mean, that's the rule. Weird. I'm going to refresh that page. Oh, there we go. I've got providers, but I didn't get. All right, let's assume something weird's going on there. Uh, so we have a machine, it's phoned home. Uh, so let's grab this out of console link and see if we can see the harvester installation process. Yes. We may have just missed it. <laughs> this looks like a reboot. Uh, yeah, shutting down demons, dependency failed. Uh oh. I don't know if this is normal. Um, I think we're just going to have to wait and see. I mean, it could be possible that the, the reboot is just part of the installation process after it writes stuff to the to the disk. Um, or it could be that something went wrong. Um, it looks like, yeah, this thing's failing. <laughs> Fails to start container OS system immutable root file system. Okay. But I mean, that doesn't look great. So what should we do? Let's go to instance and just aha, right. So uh I am assuming that the device dash dev dash SDA probably isn't just gonna exist on these machines. So we have a couple of options here. One is I'm gonna spin up another M3. Um, we'll just run it with Ubuntu. We're going to jump on. We'll see what the, the disks are. SDA. I mean, it should be available. Uh, and this was the documentation specifically for Equinix, so I should expect it to work out of the box. However, you never know. So let's just get that running so we can at least have something to kind of correlate to and, and use as an example for the devices that we have available and even the networking stack that we have available. This could be Harvester doing its thing, but... I think it's in a loop. Yeah, definitely looks like it's in a loop. I'm so not getting to play with Harvest of today, am I? Uh, okay, so there's my IP address. So let's, I'll leave that running. I won't be available yet because it's not ready. However, we'll start a second one. 
and get prepared to change a few values and see if we can spin it up. So let's get that URL back. So Equinix, iPixie install. This file here. So Amsterdam. M3, custom iPixie, script URL. Uh, and I'll name this one so we don't get confusion. Harvester new one. Do want user data, although I may have to tweak it. And what I'm going to do is copy it from the other one. So this is this one. Metadata copy in here, and we may tweak this before we spin this up. So these are the two values that I'm slightly worried about. So let's jump back over here, and we can see it's still flapping on the first one. We don't have access to our second machine yet, so I guess we're just playing the waiting game. Let's see if we can understand these error messages a bit more before I have a, a take two of this. Timed out waiting for device. So it's adding a label to SDA called container OS OEM. Um, but it's it's failing to get ready or remove. So it could just be a naming thing. We're in this machine, so we can use LS block. We have an SDA. So it should have worked. Um, what basics do we have? This is our bonded next. So the EC domain may not exist, but I'm not seeing that as a, a problem in our log. Don't know where just to try it again. Management interface. Let's assume these these are deterministic, right? So this should maybe work. So we'll drop that in, SDA. And because we've already tried it, I'm just going to try SDB. And what we can see from this empty device is we do have a SDA and an SDB. So we've got a couple of spinning disks that we can use for the operating system drive. SDE looks like it should just work. But just because I want to change something, because I don't want to go into the same loop that we already tried, is we will just go with this and see what happens. And then, in fact, let's read the documentation one more time. And I'm pretty sure this harvester install URL metadata, all good. She's using KC OS, so I'm assuming that's a variation on container OS. Uh, console, yep, yeah, cool. Do It seems fine. And if we want to see the cluster, okay, so we just changed the server. We add a, a server URL to the config and change the install mode to join. So, yeah, let's go for it. Flash try. We will give this a little bit of time and see. Um, I'm going to give up on the first one. Let's turn that down. And uh, now we wait again. Okay, let's see what the Terraform's doing this time. Oh wait, this isn't GitHub. <laughs> I 
PNPMGF. Enterprise, but it is a bit, or someone's, clo I don't know, a clone, I'm not sure. Um, but it is here. So, okay, what does this Terraform do? So, it creates the SSH key, turns up a device. Uh, okay, so they've got their own iPixie script here. So, we'll take a look at theirs and see if anything is different. We did do custom iPixie, different device types. So maybe it just doesn't work on the M3s. This, but I mean, it could be that the, the container operating system that Harvester is using just isn't supported on those device types. Uh, I could call, I maybe should have tried it on a different type. However, if this new one fails, we'll just try this again another day. Um, so let's go see what they have. I don't... I thought that file was going to be in this repository, but it's not. So let's copy this. Okay, so kernel official harvester image. It's got well, it's got a debug flag, which I guess we could have used. Other than that. Almost the same. Let's see this config. So they're passing it in there and not issues or data. Although apparently user data should be okay. Okay, so there's more than one way to do that. Whereas the iPixie script configuration that we're using does not provide a configuration. Oh, configure URL is the user data URL. Okay. Interesting. Oh, okay. So it's just pulling on user data, whereas this is actually just pointing to it directly. Okay. Ours should still work. So the only difference between these is the device type. So we may find that it just doesn't work on the empties. Uh, we just need to give this another moment or two until it dials home before I can access the, the serial console. So we'll just continue to wait. But I hope it works. And I would like to use it with the empty devices because of that abundance of RAM. You know, as I, I slice and dice it up and create virtual machines, I want to be able to allocate a decent amount of RAM to them. Although we do have our other configurations, they're not exactly shy of RAM either. So we'll take a look at that. I kind of have tempted to spin up another one really quickly with a different device type. <laughs> um, I only have 10 minutes left, so I don't think it would get there in time. So our C3 medium, which is what that repository was using, does come with 64 gig of RAM. That's still a nice machine. And in fact, let's, why not? I'm not going to all complete for me yet. Nope. Okay. Equinix. IPixie install. Raw. Copy. Go. Thing. User data. <clears throat> okay. So where was the user data? Might just use their one this time. And Equinix config create dot demo. So maybe the wrong SSH key, but they do use AC one SDA. So, okay, I'm now less worried about that. So let's pop back over here. Equinix, user data. Go. And I just need my SSH key and I'll keep their password as that.
Okay. So this one is available for cereal and our SD medium is spinning up. So we've got options. Let's go back to our outbound console. And see what we get with this one. The same. Okay. Drats. Okay, let's just shut that one down. So now all hope lies on our C3 medium, which hopefully it works. Um, yeah, it's a weird error. I'm not sure what the iPixie boot process is doing to the machine with the labels on the disks. Um, maybe have to reach out to someone at the Harvester team and see if they've actually tried it on an empty medium or empty large, sorry. Uh, and it could be we just need to get some support working there. Uh, but let's wait. We should see this device falling home within the next couple of minutes, and then we'll jump back into the studio console, and we'll hope that we get a UI. Do, do, do. I don't think we've really got any more docs to look at. No, we really just want to start playing with it now. Um, so this is quite cool, the fact, you know, um, depending on your familiarity with, with VMware, is it has this concept called vMotion, which means that, you know, if you were putting any of your bare metal machines into maintenance mode or wanting them to go offline or anything like that, then vMotion would attempt to move your, your your virtual machine live to another bare metal machine without any kind of downtime and it seems like you know harvester have this maybe working um, so you know they've got something called live migration which allows you to move a virtual machine to a different host without downtime uh, there are some caveats there so live migration is not allowed when the virtual machine is using a management network of bridge interface type so, um, we have not been able to take a look at that, so I'm not sure. Um, to support live migration, three or more hosts in the cluster are required. Um, but it seems that this is because of a known issue and not something that would be expected. Interesting. Well, that would be nice to try it if we get there. It's got Rancher integration. So that's nice so we can i guess run rancher and provision our own kubernetes clusters via harvester using um, virtual machines so really nice to be getting or pushing towards that um, ephemeral kubernetes cluster idea these are things that are just are really difficult to do on your own without access to expensive software the harvester is really coming in and, and filling a gap here in the open source world that's really nice to see what's the harvester node driver Oh, <laughs> turtles all the way down. I think what this is doing is allowing you to provision new harvester clusters or new harvester nodes. Uh, okay, we leave it at that. I just want to play. I guess we could always watch a demo video. <laughs> hey, come on, where are we? Going home already. Right, cool. Let's get our outbound console. Fingers crossed. Not anymore. 
Now, I think we're just really early in the boot process and Harvester hasn't attempted to pixie boot yet. So we should be able to see all errors at this stage. Ah, uh, it doesn't work. But that is very unfortunate. So no harvester today. All right, well, harvester seems cool. And I think it's a really important project in the bare metal space. I'm really excited to get to play with it. Uh, however, today is not going to be that day. Um, unfortunately, the documentation doesn't allow us to get it running via the iPixie installation method. I will need to do some debugging into this, probably reach out to the Harvester Steam. Uh, and a friend of mine, Siam, did get this running at one point in the past, a few months ago. So I'll reach out to Siam and see if he ran into this issue as well, or if this is a new issue. However, we will try this again in the future. So thank you for bearing with me. Harvester seems cool. We will play with it another day. All right. Have a good one.